Hey there, I'm Jim, and this is Flip Flop, last dog in the pool. And this is my one female girl, Tinkerbell, and we call her Tink. And she is a certified therapy dog. When people say, what's that? What is that, huh? Is that a bear? Can I ride it? Where's the saddle? <laughs> This is Skylar and she's 11 and my name is Heather and we're with Pets on Wheels. Pets on Wheels shares love to lick stress and loneliness. We have over 500 volunteers across the state of Maryland and we have 466 pets right now who go out and visit everywhere from nursing homes to shelters to veterans facilities, hospitals, hospices. These are basically trained for temperament calming and comfort and to help in times of stress. Studies have shown that petting an animal can reduce your blood pressure by up to 10 points, which is more than some medications can do. Well, we go to assisted living and we visit with um, dementia patients, rehab patients. Uh, most people who are living in nursing homes 60% of them don't receive regular visits. Often our therapy pets are their friends and they're the people and the interactions that they have the most often. The amazing thing is that when you walk into assisted living, you find the 80 and 90 year old people and their eyes just light up when they see these dogs. For people who are suffering from dementia, animals are incredibly powerful because they're typically a tie back to those earlier memories. Therapy dogs often visit hospice wards where they provide comfort to patients who are dying. Tinkerbell visit hospice patients and she does a great job. And when we go in, she is completely a different dog. She senses um, what she should be doing. I think she just thinks it's a big um, house with a bunch of beds and she likes to snuggle with people, so she enjoys it and she works at the library with children that don't like to read. Studies have shown that animals will increase literacy by 30% when the kids read to them because they're non-judgmental. And the dogs represent a very non-threatening environment. And so kids um, tend to read much more fluently and positively and enjoy their books when they're reading to the dogs. These animals require intensive training to be able to help others. Um, there's an old phrase, easy as pie. If you've ever baked a pie, you know it's not easy. Tinkerbell and Flop have been in training since they're 10 weeks old. And every single minute is a training session with them. One of the things I've noticed is that when you put the little blue cape on the girls, they know it's time to go to work. The screening process is pretty easy. We just play with their ears, play with their mouth, play with their feet, pull on their tail. So if you can imagine holding a cake pan or a bed pan at about waist or chest high and dropping it on the floor and the dog does not react. They had to learn that a wheelchair was not scary they had to approach a wheelchair in a certain way. It really takes years of training and commitment to have a dog, treat a dog well, and train a dog. Not every animal can be a therapy pet. Some aspects of temperament and personality can't be trained. Typically someone will have an animal that is just very wonderful and very loving, and that's how they'll think about becoming a therapy team. Not all dogs have the calmness, the gentleness, the just this quiet demeanor. And the number one misconception is that they're the same as service animals. They are not. I can't just take her into random places. I actually have to sign up for the place before I go to it. 
they do not have automatic access to the grocery stores, to housing, to any facilities like service animals. Even so, therapy animals can provide much needed comfort to people in stressful situations. There was an 18 year old um, boy and his mom was passing away in the hospice center. He was sitting at the table trying to eat his food. So he, he pushed himself away from the food and pushed the food away. And, and I put her in his lap and he just sobbed into her fur for a good half an hour. She just sat there. And after that, he was able to go and do what he needed to do. We had a gentleman um, in the veterans home and uh, our volunteer goes there. Her dog is Sky. Sky went over to the gentleman and he started petting her. And after a few minutes, he said, nice dog. And Sharon noticed the staff member almost dropped her clipboard. And it turned out that the gentleman had PTSD and had been uncommunicative for over a month. We started doing this because when I was younger, my grandmother was in a hospice situation and a dog came in. And I remember the dog coming in. So when I, I thought when I got older, I could get a dog and we could do the same thing. It's of, um. It's very emotional because these dogs bring out the best in everybody. I've always said, I hope that when I'm in an assisted living or a memory care situation, that somebody brings a big bear like Tinkin to see me. The best part about the job is the rewarding nature of somebody smiling at you if they haven't been coherent the whole day. And I would say if anybody wants to find out more, visit us online at petsonwheels.org. That's what they love to do. They're just like filled to the brim with love. Bless you. The problem is they know our dogs, but they don't know us. They say, oh, here comes Flop. Here comes Tinkerbell. And who are you? This one decided to show everybody her belly. And everybody in the hall was laughing. And if that doesn't start your day off right, Nothing will. <laughs>